So in this video, we're going to get started with our probability unit and mostly just explore theoretical probability in this particular video. Uh, but in the unit, we are going to be comparing uh, theoretical to experimental probability. Now, the first thing I want to go ahead and point out is that the theoretical probability is what you expect to occur. It's kind of like a hypothesis in science. You're just going to try to make an educated guess when making a prediction. Now, the other type of probability that we're going to explore is experimental, which is what has actually occurred, which is the results. So for some of you, when filling out your NCAA bracket, you probably were using the experimental data from the past seasons and seen what's happened in the past to make your predictions. Some of you just theoretically made your predictions by whichever seed was the higher seed. You just said, OK, theoretically, the higher seed should win. Some of you said in the past, this is what has happened, and that's how you've made your prediction. Now, in this video, folks, we're focusing right now only on one. We're only focusing on theoretical probability. Now, to explain the difference briefly before we move on in the packet, I've got just a free throw scenario. So theoretically, with theoretical probability, everyone has a 50% chance of making a free throw when they go to the line. What that means is that you have a one half chance. If you're going to shoot twice, we basically expect you to make one and miss one, okay? So theoretically, that's what we would expect to happen, and that would be our hypothesis. Now, what can happen, though, is after you start playing a bunch of games, we start to see how many free throws you're making out of your total attempts, and then we take the numerator and divide it by the denominator to see what percent free throw shooter you actually are. So let's say you've made three out of your 10 free throws so far. You're a 30% free throw shooter, which means you're worse than what was expected. Now let's say you've made seven out of the 10, which means you're a 70% free throw shooter. Then you are better than what's expected theoretically. So we have theoretical predictions that we can make, which are just good educated guesses, kind of like your hypothesis or we can be making predictions based on some data that we have and I just kind of wanted to explain the difference that everybody theoretically is a 50% free throw shooter but experimentally you are whatever your makes are out of the total as a percent free throw shooter. Shaquille O'Neal for example, really famous basketball player, terrible at shooting free throws. He theoretically has a 50% chance of making every one of them, but we know Shaq is very bad at free throws, so he is likely going to miss when he goes to the free throw line. All right, now back into the packet. Now this definition is going to be on your quiz. I am telling you this box right here is going to be on your quiz. Probability is the number of favorable outcomes out of the total number of possible outcomes. And I am going to come back to this and explain what I mean once we've seen a few examples, all right? Now, probability can be written as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent, and we're mostly going to focus on reducing our fractions, dividing them in the calculator to get the decimal, and then we'll move the decimal over twice and write our answers as a percent, okay? Now, on a scale of 0 to 100%, I did want to kind of just uh, explain what these words are going to mean. Folks, if something is certain, that means there is a 100% chance that it's going to happen, okay? Now, if it's impossible, there is a 0% chance that it's going to happen. Now, let's say I am flipping a coin. There is an equally likely chance that I'd get heads or tails because there's a 1 out of 2 chance that I'd land on heads or tails. That's what I mean by equally is likely for 50%. Now, if something is more than 50%, meaning it's anywhere here on the number line between 50% and 100%, we'd consider the event likely. Now, if it's under 50%, between 0 and 50%, we're going to consider the event unlikely. All right? So we've got impossible, unlikely, equally as likely as something else, likely, or a certain event. All right. Now let's again, we're just continuing to explore theoretical probability. I'd like to point out that right now in the packet, no experiment has been conducted. We don't have any data, no results of anything, so we're not looking at any experimental probability whatsoever yet. Right now, we're still focusing on just theoretical. Now, in your notes, this isn't very, uh, the, the coloring's not there, but I put red and orange and blue and green boxes around all of these uh, rectangles to help you see. We have four reds, we have two whites, we have one orange, 
we have two blue, and we have one green. Folks, I highly recommend this strategy of writing it down off to the side so that when you're coming down here and having to answer probabilities, you can look quickly at the numbers as opposed to having to come and count. If you have to come in and count every time, you're running the risk of possibly missing one of them. All right? So all I did was add up here. I've added them all up. I've got 10. You can count over here. We've got 10 total. And now let's get started. First, we want to know the probability of selecting a red card. So we have one, two, three, four reds. Once again, we can see it listed here. We've got four out of 10 reds. Now four out of 10 reduces to two fifths. Now to get the percent, I wanted to remind you guys that you can take the two and divide it by five in the calculator. There's the 0.4. You can move the decimal over twice and get 40%. You could also hit times 100 in the calculator, and that tells you immediately it's 40%. Okay? Now let's move on to blue. What's the probability we're going to select the blue one? Well, we've got two blues, so 2 out of the 10 reduces to 1 fifth, and 1 divided by 5 would be 20%. 2 tenths, 20%. It is more likely that we're going to select a red than a blue because there are more reds than there are blues. In fact, because there are twice as many reds as there are blues, we can see that we're twice as likely to select a red than we are to select a blue. All right, now for this next one, this is the first time we're seeing something with or. This time we're saying it could be white or blue. I don't care. I'm going to draw a card, and I want to see if it's going to be white or blue. So over here, we have two whites and two blues. So if it could be white or blue, it could be one of these four cards, which is where I'm getting the four out of the 10, which once again reduces to two fifths, which would be 40%. So we are equally as likely to pick a white or a blue randomly as we would be to select the red. If we had these 10 cards and they were all face down, we had them, let's say like the problem says, if we turn the cards over so we can't see what color they are, we are going to be equally as likely to select red as we would to pick a red, or excuse me, a white or a blue one. All right, now last but not least, we're going to go after yellow. And folks, there are no yellow cards in here. There are no yellow cards out of these 10, so there's a 0% chance that we'd select yellow. That would be impossible in this case. We are unlikely to select a blue, we are unlikely to select a blue. Now I do want to go back to this likely unlikely scale. Earlier I mentioned that to be likely, you're going to want to be above 50% and that to be unlikely, it's going to be below 50%. But out of all of these cards, folks, what color do we have the most of? We have the most reds. So even though we only have a 40% chance of selecting a red here, we do have the best chance overall of selecting a red because there are more reds than there are of any other color. Okay, so red does have the best chance, even though overall it's still pretty unlikely because if we were picking at random, we'd likely pick one of these other six ones as opposed to picking one of the four reds. All right, now let's flip over. Now we're just going to practice with some theoretical probability. And I just wanted to kind of walk you guys through a lot of really popular scenarios when it comes to um, calculating probability. You're going to see a lot where somebody is going to roll the dice. You're going to see uh, picking a card out of a deck. And you're going to see a lot of different spinner examples. So I want to remind you guys that on one of these bad boys, you have the numbers 1 through 6. In some of our problems, you might hear it called a number cube. And the reason sometimes it's referred to as a number cube is because die versus dice, singular versus plural. Die kind of just sounds a little bit weird. Um, it is the singular. You do have one die versus two dice. And because we just commonly um, mix up when we have one versus two, we're just a lot of times going to see this called a number cube. Okay? So in this scenario, we're just going to be rolling a number cube, and I want to know the probability of getting a five. Well, there's only one of those over here. Uh, careful folks, when I was your age and I answered this question, when I saw the 5 there, I would say there's a 5 out of 6 chance. And it was just me being silly thinking, oh, 5, 5 out of 6. That is so wrong. There's only one 5 on one of these number cubes. And now let me show you guys in the calculator. If we take 1 and divide it by the 6, we get the point 1 with the 6's that repeat. 
Friendly reminder that the reason this is a seven is because off the calculator, the sixes would keep going. And so the six right here off the calculator rounds this one that you can still see on the screen to a seven. But now if I move the decimal over twice, it's going to be a 16.6. To help you see it, I'll just multiply by the 100. So it's 16.6 repeating percent. And because this is a 6, if I round that up to the nearest whole, we're going to just say about 17%. So there's about a 17% chance that we'd roll a 5. Now this is kind of like the equal sign when you round, y'all. It's kind of like the similar symbol. And it's just got two of these squigglies saying it's about 17%. All right, now for the next one. What's the probability that we'd land on a 2 or a 3? Well, a 2 or a 3, that's 2 out of the 6 options, which reduces to a third, which would be about 33%. Another thing I want to point out, y'all, is that I've asked it with words for number 1, what is the probability of getting a 5? And this here that I'm putting a rectangle around in red, that is the same as me saying what's the probability of getting a 5. Here I'm saying what's the probability of a 2 or a 3, Next, I'm saying, what's the probability that we'd get a 2, a 3, or a 5? Well, 2, 3, or 5, that's half of the 6 faces. So 3 out of the 6, that's half. That's a 50% chance that that happened. So, so far, that's the most likely out of these three events. Now, this next one's going to be impossible. Because if we're only going to roll this thing once, there's no way we can land on a 1 and a 4 at the same time. That's not going to happen. It's going to be a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, or a 5, or a 6, but it can't land on two numbers at the same time. Now, real quick review for the number prime, what prime means, the vocab. Prime numbers have two factors, one and then the other number itself. So two times one is two, three times one is three, and five times one is five. Now the reason one is over here with neither is because it only has one factor. So the prime numbers are two, three, and five, and so the probability of getting a prime number is the same as question 3. It's the same as me asking the probability of a 2, 3, or 5. So 50%. There's another one here that's going to be impossible. There are no 7s over here on the number cube. There's only 6 faces. So if I ask what's the probability that I'm going to land on 7, 0% chance. All right, now we're on the next one. Now we're on question 7. What is the probability of getting an even number. All right, well that means it could be a 2, a 4, or a 6. So that's half of them, which means there's a 50% chance of us getting even. All right, now for number 8, which event is more likely to occur? Us rolling an even number or us rolling a 5? Well earlier we said that the probability of us rolling a 5 is only 17%. And the probability of us rolling an even number we just found is 50%. So we are way more likely to roll an even number than we are to roll a 5. Now for number 9. Which one of these events is the least likely to occur? So for A, I want to know the probability of us rolling a 1, a 2, or a 3. Well, if it could be any one of those, that's half of the number cube. So there's a 50% chance there. Let's go to B. The probability of even, we've already found, is half of them are even, 2, 4, and 6, so 50%. Now the probability of us rolling a 1 or a 2. So over here, now there's only two things. It could be a 1 or a 2. So if it could only be two things, the 2 out of the 6 reduces to a third, which is only 33%. The last one, odd, that's going to be 50% because we have 1, 3, and 5. So A, B, and D are all equally as likely as each other. C at 33% is the least likely to occur. All right, now for the deck of cards, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pull up an image of the deck of cards. So here I've got the deck of cards and you can see that there's 13 of this type of card. These are the clubs, there's 13 clubs. There are 13 spades. There are 13 hearts, and there are 13 diamonds. So there are 13 of each suit. We have four aces, four twos, four threes, and so on, all the way up to four kings. You'll notice that half of the deck is black. Those are 26 black cards there. And these 26 cards are red cards. 
So we have 52 total cards. And let me just show you guys real quick if I do the 52 cards divided by the four different type. There are going to be 13 cards in each of these types. Okay? All right. Now let me go back to the notes. Okay. So for the deck of cards, what it mentions right here is there's 52 total cards. Half of them are red. We've got 26 red, 26 black. And then it said four of each kind, which means like the four aces, the four twos, four threes, four fours, and so on. There's also four jacks, four queens, and four kings. So first thing we want to know is what's the probability of us selecting a red card? Well, y'all, it tells you right there, 26 of the total, 26 out of 52. And we're going to reduce that answer, and we're going to circle that it's half the deck, which is 50% chance of selecting red. Now, for black ace, we want to know the probability of selecting a black ace. If I pull the picture back up, there are two out of the entire 52 that are black aces. It's these two right here. Okay, so we have a two out of 52 chance. So that's right there, two out of 52. Now, these can both uh, divide by two. I can reduce. So I get a one out of 26 chance. And now I'm going to show you guys in the calculator, when you divide the 1 by 26, if you do 1 divided by the 26, boom, and move the decimal over twice, and it's about a 3.8% chance. If I hit times 100, you can see that this 4 is not going to round this up to a 9, so that's where I get my 3.8% chance. Now we already reviewed that there are 4 kings in the deck. 4 divided by 4 is 1 and 52 divided by 4 is 13. So 4 out of 52 does reduce to 1 13th. And if I take 1 now and divide it by the 13, I'm going to show you guys if I hit times 100, this 9 does move this 6 up to a 7.7%. So, so far, out of picking a red, a black ace, oh, whoops, I skipped one, sorry, I skipped all the way to king. Um, but out of those three, we're most likely to just pick a red card because half the deck is red. Uh, my mistake for skipping number three, it looks like my calculator was blocking it. Let me pull the calculator back up and move it over here. All right, so for number three, what's the probability that we could get a queen or an eight? All right, y'all, there's four queens and there's four eights. I'll show you again in the picture. I have my four queens right here. There's my four queens and here's my four eights. So there's eight things total that it could be. Eight out of the 52 does reduce if you need to divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2, go for it. But it becomes a 2 out of 13. Now when I divide the 2 by the 13, right there it's going to be 15.4% because the 8 moves it up. I'll hit times 100 to help you see it. Boom, that 8 moves the 3 up to a 15.4% chance. Alright, now in the deck of cards here we want to know which of these two events are equally likely to occur. So for the first one, if we're going to pick an ace, there's only four aces in the deck. We already found that four out of 52 reduces to a 113, which is 7.7% chance. We already found the probability of picking a red card is half, which is 50%. We have not yet talked about the probability of picking a diamond. I want to remind you guys that we have 13 diamonds in the deck, or a fourth of them. In the picture, you can see right here this bottom row is one of the four rows so our 13 out of 52 diamonds reduces to a fourth of the deck which is a 25 percent chance of picking a diamond and for the black cards once again that was half the deck so we have an equally likely chance of selecting a red or a black card b and d both have a 50 percent chance to occur now down here on your notes, the, um, the way that the copier works, it's kind of tough to see the color sections, but I have them here on the video. And so for the first one, we're going to check to see what's the probability of getting in red. Now the idea, folks, is that each of these five sections are all the same size, so each one of these sections is equally likely to occur. We're equally likely to land on orange or red or green or yellow or purple because they're all the same size. Down here, if we have a bigger yellow section than the other two, we can see that this yellow section has a 50% chance. Red and green only have 25%. So in this scenario, we'd be more likely to land on yellow than we would either the green or the red. But up here, each of our sections is the same size. 
So the probability that we'd land on red is just the one fifth, which is 20%. Now this one, actually, let me fix this because I have, I thought it said purple or yellow. When I put this here originally, I was reading that it said purple or yellow. So this is actually totally incorrect. There is a 0% chance that we're going to land on purple and yellow. We can't land on two sections at the same time. And if we landed smack there in the middle, we'd have to spin again. Now, if it had said purple or yellow, now we're talking about that it could be two out of the five. Okay? So that's the difference between and and or here. Purple and yellow is a 0% chance. Kind of like up here, one and four is a 0% chance. Um, if I put it to or, it becomes 40%. I'm going to erase this because your notes say purple and yellow. So there is a 0% chance and we'll ignore the 40% for now. All right, what's the probability of getting a pink? Well, there's no pink, so it's not going to happen. Impossible. Now for the not yellow. There are one, two, three, four of the sections that are not yellow, y'all. So there's an 80% chance that we're going to select something or uh, land on something that's not yellow. Okay? All right, now for the last one. Which one of these states, statements is true? So is this true? Landing on an orange has the highest probability. Well, no. Landing on an orange is a one out of five, which is 20%, which is the same as everything else. All right, the next one. Landing on green has a greater chance than landing on yellow. Nope. They are the same size. So 20% for green, 20% for yellow. They have the same percent chance. The last one says there's an equally likely chance for each color to be landed on. Yep. Since each section is the same size, they're all equally likely. So we're going to select the last one. And that concludes the video on theoretical probability. Thank you.